Hey guys, welcome back to the 411 on Tech. Today we're going to be talking about Sony's new firmware that just released, the Beta Firmware 2.0. Now it's not releasable to the public yet, but we just wanted to talk about it. Um, it has some really uh, good features that's going to be coming once it becomes public. Michelle, you want to talk about the first big one? Yeah, so the first big one, which I'm sure we've all been waiting for, is support for the M.2 SSD. So now you're going to be able to insert, your, get an M.2, insert it into your machine, and be able to have extra storage. So, you know, a lot of us are running out of space. We're wondering when it's going to happen. It's been almost a year now since they've released. So we're definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, another one is uh, 3D audio for your TV speakers. Now, they had the 3D Tempest audio for the headphones. Now they have it for TV speakers and then in another future update then they'll, they'll have it for like sound systems and sound bars but you know games like Astro's you know uh, Astrobot will have that you know that spatial audio that 3D audio we can hear things coming through your TV speakers now and there's another uh, one that's also yeah so also another thing that a lot of people have been kind of complaining about and we've had issue with as well is in your game's uh, home screen, you never were quite sure what version you were playing, whether it would be the PlayStation 5 version or the PlayStation 4. So now they've actually made it where it's separated out, so you have a, you'll, and it indicates which one is the PlayStation 5 and which one is the PlayStation 4 version. So now when you're playing, you know exactly what version you're playing, so that's nice that they've done that. Yeah, definitely. Now, some of the requirements for that um, SSD, it has to be an M.2 NVMe SSD. It has to be PCIe um, Express 4.0. The, um, the socket type has to be socket 3 um, key M. And the read speed has to be at least 5,500 megabytes per second or faster. Uh, capacities can be anywhere from 250 gigabytes up to 4 terabytes. Uh, 4 terabytes is pretty expensive. Uh, and then they also lay out the dimensions that the uh, the drive has to be, um, including the heat sink, and we'll throw that up on the screen, uh, the dimensions that you need. And Michelle, you want to talk about some compatible drives? Yeah, so there's a number of compatible drives, and we'll link uh, to a couple of sites that really lay it all out. But if you're looking for one, they have SSDs that have the heat sink already on. So if you're just looking for the easy way in, you don't have to worry about getting your own heat sink, putting it together. There's a couple of versions that do that. You have the Western Digital Black SN850. There's also the Fire, Fire, excuse me, Fire Cuda 530 and the Corsair MP600 Pro. So those are a couple ones that you can get with the heatsink already on. So you just put it into the M.2 slot here in the PlayStation 5 and you're ready to go. There's also um, SSDs that don't have the heatsink if you might want to add your own or whatever. We have the 980 Pro. Uh, you know, we have other Samsung drives and we really, you know, do well with those. We haven't had any issues, so we usually go with Samsung. There's also the Sambrit Rocket 4 and the Crucial 5, P5 Plus. So those are just a couple. Again, we'll throw in a couple of sites where you can get a whole list and they'll list out all the heat sinks. Um, we have a heat sink here that we just got off of Amazon. Um, it's like, uh, I'm not sure. oh, okay, so it's Easy DIY Fab. So that's the one that we have, and that worked fine. Um, so you can pick one of those up if you want to get, you know, another drive that might not come with a heatsink. Yeah. So uh, we're going to show you how to install the heatsink on the drive, uh, and how to install it in the PlayStation 5, and we're going to get into it right after this. Okay, so you're going to want to use a flathead screwdriver to take the base off, put that to the side. Now you want to lift it up and slide it to the bottom. You grab both those corners and it'll slide out with a little bit of force. Now you would take a Phillips head screwdriver and take this uh, plate off and that's going to give you access to where you install the M.2 drive. Unscrew that. Just put the screw to the side somewhere we don't lose it. And you take the plate off of this little door, lift it up and out. Now we use the Samsung 980 Pro M.2 drive PCIe Express 4.0, two terabyte. And the Easy DIY Fab M.2 SSD heatsink is what we use for the heatsink. 
and we'll leave a link to both of these items in the description of this video. This is what comes with the heatsink. You get instructions, an extra screw, a tiny Phillips screwdriver, the heatsink itself, and then there's going to be two thermal pads. Now you start by disassembling the heatsink. You're going to unscrew the Phillips screws with this tiny screwdriver and you want to make sure these tiny screws don't bounce all over the place. Should have my make our magnetic dish to, to hold these. And it just comes apart and you place the two pieces down like so. Now we're going to apply the thermal pads to the M.2 SSD. Now there's a little bit of uh, plastic on here that you need to take off to get to the adhesive and I'll show that in a later part of this video. Then you apply it to the PCB like this. You're covering the the controller and the NAND memory. Now it's a little bit too long so I'm going to cut it because it was covering the connection pins reconnect the drive to the PlayStation 5 so I just needed to cut it so it wouldn't be covering that. I just cut a little bit off the top here. Also on the back you want to make sure it's not covering where you're going to screw it in. So now I make sure it's down nice on the PCB and I just apply it. Stick it right there on the heat sink. Now I use that little piece that I cut from the first thermal pad to use as a template to cut the second thermal pad so they're, it's going to be both the same size and I won't run into the issue again where it's too long. So I just cut a little bit off there using that as a template. Put that to the side. Now I applied it to the bottom the same way I did to the top and here's where I'm going to show taking that uh, plastic that's on both sides of the thermal pad off. Now I just recently cut my fingernail so it, I was struggling a little bit to get it off but just kind of roll it up at the corner and it comes off and that's the extra little bit of plastic. Now I'll put the bottom of the heat sink on. You want to make sure that it is covering the thermal pad but it's not covering the screw slot in the back where you secure the drive to the PlayStation and it's not covering the front where the connection of the M.2 drive goes into the PlayStation as well. So I checked it and my clearances look good in the back and in the front. Now we're going to install it into the PlayStation. Now it's keyed so it only goes obviously one way and you just want to apply a little bit of pressure kind of in at an angle and push it in. You'll feel it when it's in place and now it's in. Now there's a tiny screw and washer that's in the furthest most slot because uh, these drives come in different sizes. But you want to move that washer and put it right below the M.2 drive. So you're going to use that washer and the screw and you're going to this is going to secure it into place. Screw that in. Now just hold held down the drive just for a little bit more uh, security there. And you replace the cover now. And just slide it into place and reattach the screw, and that's going to hold that in. A pretty, pretty easy install. Now you're going to uh, reapply the faceplate. And it has uh, little slots uh, on the underside and you just kind of slide those back in and you'll feel it when it goes into place. You just kind of finagle it or wiggle it in and it'll snap into place. It only took a few seconds to, to get this done. And it's, it's in place now. And there you have it. It's done. I'm going to reapply the, uh, the base the same way that I took it off. I just slide it in and screw it into place. And uh, that's uh, pretty much all there is to it guys. And it, it's uh, installed. Now you're probably going to have to wait to the public uh, firmware release if you didn't get in with the beta. But that's all.
Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below. It helps our channel grow, and we'll see you guys in the next one.